Come on, put your hands together. If I can get all the young people, if you in your living room, come on close to the TV. You know, it's Youth and Young Adult Sunday, so we come to give God some glory this morning. Hallelujah. been good give thanks give thanks for the Lord is good and he's always been good say so give thanks give thanks for the Lord is good and he's always been good say give thanks Jesus, with the voice. 
we bless your name, Jesus. We serve an undefeated God. Hallelujah. Therefore, he's always given us the victory. That even after this, there's going to be some glory, y'all. There's going to be some glory. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Come on, say something to him. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We know that you're the greatest power. And you've given us the greatest power. It's within us. And therefore, we won't be defeated. We won't walk in fear. But we're going to walk in victory. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. Even in discouragement, God, we give you glory. Even in fear and in hurt, your people give you glory. Hallelujah. say and because God and because God is the greatest power is the greatest power we shall never we shall never ever be defeated ever be defeated that's all we're saying and because God, and because God is the greatest power is the greatest power we shall never we shall Never be defeated, never be defeated, and because God, and because God is the greatest, is the greatest power, we shall never, we shall never, never be, never be defeated, and because God, and because God is the greatest, is the greatest power, we shall. Shall never, never be, defeated. never be defeated. Can we say that one more time? And because God, and because God, God, He is the greatest, the greatest power. We shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. Never be defeated. And because God, and because God, He is the greatest, is the greatest power. We shall never. Shall never, never be defeated. Never be defeated. Come on, lift up your voice. We honor you, God. We bless your name, Jesus. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. You've given us the victory. Hallelujah. You've given us boldness. Hallelujah. You've given us strength, oh God. This next part it just says the devil is a liar and God is exalted so I'll never be defeated I'll never be defeated the devil is Never be defeated. Say the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. 
Praise the Lord, Kingdom Worship Center. I pray that you guys have enjoyed the service so far. Uh, what a wonderful presence of the Lord that we have been experiencing so far. Uh, it's Youth Sunday, uh, so I guess they asked somebody with a little more uh, youth <laughs> to speak on today. I am younger than Bishop, significantly younger, and uh, so uh, that's, I guess that's why I'm here today. <laughs> Uh, but also, um, you know, uh, don't be afraid because um, I preach just as good as Bishop sings. So you have no concerns, right? So uh, this what I'm going to speak about this morning um, is is more than it is a sermon, per se. I, I believe this is a message um, directly from heaven to us, um, but it does have a title to it. And the title is, We Ain't Regular. I need you to put that into the comments right now. We ain't regular. So 2020, I've, I've been, you know, we spent some time on social media and all of our downtime. A lot of us have more idle time than we usually have during this uh, stay home order and during this pandemic. And I was scrolling one day and I saw this meme that said, 2020 has been so ghetto. <laughs> But, there, but the, the intent of that meme is that in 2020, there have been so many things that have literally, literally changed our lives. Um, so one of the first things that happened is that the death of uh, NBA star Kobe Bryant tragically died in a helicopter accident with his daughter and with seven other, uh, seven other people, um, along with some other younger people and parents um, that were also on that helicopter crash. Um, and of course, this COVID-19 pandemic that we're experiencing right now is something that any of us, none of us have ever experienced a pandemic in our lifetime. Um, um, so this is something that has been unprecedented. And these things have literally changed our lives forever. Um, so but God has a way. Hallelujah. God has a way of extracting goodness out of the worst of our situations. God has a way. We see the hand of God in all of these situ situations. He will always make everything cooperate, cooperate and conform to his will. And all of these things come together and work for our good. Bishop said it last week so eloquently. And I love this phrase right here. If God allowed it, he intends to use it. If God allowed it in your life, he intends to use it. He intends to use it. I was reading in uh, Genesis 50 uh, uh, in, uh, about Joseph. And then the scripture comes up in Genesis 50 and 20. It says what the enemy meant for evil. God has intended for my good. This is what that scripture says. But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order. Listen to this. In order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Let me get, let's give a little context for, from this story here. Joseph was thrown into a hole by his brothers. A hole. And at the end of the story, at the end of the day, he ends up being a hero. Joseph went from a hole to be the hero of the story. That's how God is able to extract, extract goodness, goodness from the most tragic of situations. So in the most horrible, the most dirtiest situations that you can think of that happened in your life, God is still able. Hallelujah. God is still able to extract goodness from anything that you've gone through. I will remain confident in these things. We will see the goodness of the Lord even in this. Somebody just put in the, com the comments there. I have confidence. I have confidence. So what is the good news that we can extract from these events? Um, when when uh, after the passing of Kobe Bryant, we started seeing these hashtags that said girl dad, girl dad. Everywhere you're saying girl dad, girl dad, girl dad. And, and, and there was this reconnecting of the family structure of the fabric uh, and the fiber of the family structure reconnecting. Um, fathers reconnecting with their children, children reconnecting with their fathers. Huh? Come on. That's that's the goodness that God extracts from these these tragic situations. COVID, this coronavirus, this pandemic situation is a little bit more complex. 
Corona has taken away all sense of normality. We can't get our hair cut. We can't go to the salon. <laughs> Even if you go to can try to buy some, you can't, if you order new clothes online for retail therapy, who's, who's going to see you in it? You can't go nowhere. You go to the grocery store with your mask on. Nobody even going to know that you got the new clothes on. Y'all, eating habits have changed. Speaking of the grocery store, uh, well, I, I know for me, I'm cooking more, more than I ever cooked in my life. I am not that dude that goes into the kitchen and cooks. That's not me. But because of this pandemic, I am able to, actually, I'm able to do better with my diet and eat better, which is a good thing. Some, uh, we are able to be better as far as our financial stewardship. If your income hasn't been compromised slightly, uh, it's been compromised totally. And some people that aren't uh, getting any income at all, no work, no pay. But we are able through this pandemic to uh, be smarter with our budgets and be wise with our money. This pandemic has also taught us how to submit to authority. <laughs> It taught us how to submit. You just can't go where you want to go. You just can't go where you want to go without a mask. They won't even let you in the grocery store without your mask on. So it has taught us to submit to authority. These things that have been taken away, these new conditions, per se, that we're living by, have given us the perfect conditions for revival. This is why. This is why. COVID-19, hear me, and you might want to write this down. COVID-19 has ejected us from a lethargic pattern that kept us ignorant to our identity, that kept our purpose just as a pastime, and kept our spiritual heroism dormant. I'm going to say it again. COVID-19 has ejected us from a lethargic pattern, a lazy pattern, just a lazy routine that kept us ignorant to our identity, that kept our purpose as a pastime, just something we did here and there, and kept our spiritual heroism dormant. COVID-19 has taken away the systems and structures and crutches. It's taken away all of our idols and even potential idols. It's pruned our lives and breaking our lives down to the most simple factors that it could be. And that's what God wants. He's, he's breaking us down back to our simple factors, to the simplicity. My mother uh, has a green thumb. She's a gardener. And um, I, I remember growing up and even till this day, I would watch my mom in the um, go out in the yard and she will uh, have a bush that's half dead. Part of, literally half dead. Part of it's living on one side, but it has a bunch of dead branches on the other side. Who I'm getting. Whew, I'm getting happy. And I would see my mother go into the, uh, the, the garden and start to cut away these dead things and start to prune away those dead things. She didn't take it up and uproot it, but she started to take away the things that weren't necessary, the things that were choking out the life in the bush, the things that were sick. And she started to cut those things away from the things that, that needed to, uh, uh, the dead things away from the things that needed, that were still living. Cutting away the dead things from the things that were still living, separating them. And she would take those things and throw them in the garbage. <laughs> And breaking and, and, and by doing that, she gave the opportunity for that bush to live again. By taking away and pruning and taking away all of those dead things, she gave that, the, the bush and that plant new life. But she brought it back down to where there, everything around it was living. Everything. There's no more dead stuff. And that's what this COVID-19, this pandemic has done. It's taken away all of those those dead things, the things that we haven't needed. All of those things. I remember uh, uh, Pop Hamby with, with, with uh, the sermon that he was preaching about simplicity uh, in the gospel. He used this word barnacles, this word barnacles uh, 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 that that when something when there was a treasure somewhere in the sea, that these things would just become attached come attached to this item and you would have to strip away all the barnacles to get to the treasure. Beloved, listen to me. Our lives have been attached by barnacles, religious barnacles, uh, um, um, uh, uh, barnacles of abuse, barnacles of, of, of selfish ambition, barnacles of, of um, uh, all kinds of barnacles. Things have been added onto our, our lives, but God has been stripping those things away. So we can get back to the core of how he made us, our purpose and what it was in the beginning 
from the foundations of the world when he gave you a function, a primary function, before he even gave you a form. He's pruned all of those things away. He stripped us down to our original. Now that everything is stripped down, now is the ideal time for us to seek God and find the answers about our identity and our purpose and find our inner hero. What was in God's mind before, before we were abused, before we were taken advantage of, before our home conditions created self-worth issues, before, before a guidance counselor or a teacher told you what you weren't going to be, before you got fired, before someone told you what your career path would be, before someone told you uh, you'll never be anything, before someone told you, uh, it's before somebody introduced you to substance abuse, before someone told you what your worth is and what, what, what made you feel like on the inside, before anxiety tried to take over your life, before all of those things. What were you before all of those things? What were you before you, the breakup? What were you before the divorce? What were you before? What was in the mind of God when he created you? I want to put this little prophetic point here about before. During this time, God is stripping away the reproach. There are narratives out there on you, just like there's narratives out there on me. And God is using this time to start to erase the gossip that has gone around about you. He has removed the reproach. It's time for you to reintroduce yourself. Come on, put that in the comments. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Beloved, let's not use this time just to binge watch. Let's not use this time to be lulled asleep. Use this time strategically to reinvent yourself. And I'm not talking about into something new. I'm talking about to the original intent, that new normal. The new normal is God's original intent for your life. That is the new normal. We aren't going back to normal. If, you, if, if there's a desire in your heart to go back to normal, I promise you that's the enemy. That's the voice of the enemy. We can't go back to regular. We can't go back to church as normal. You can't go back to work as normal. You can't treat your family as normal. You can't walk down the street and, be, and go back to regular. There is a new normal. And the new normal that God is talking about, oh my God, the new normal that God is talking about is his original intent for your life. His original intent for your life. Now it's just you and God. And God has created these uh, conditions for a personal revival. Let me talk about revival for a second. I didn't plan to be this long. I'm sorry. But revival is not three services before we go back to school. How many people remember back to school revival? This is what revival is. You can write this down as well and put it in the comments. Revival is a return to spiritual consciousness. To live again. Listen to this, to bring back to relevance, to return to God's original intent. And just like, revi just like COVID-19, revival is contagious. Revival has a pattern. Revival starts personally. Revival starts in me, and then it goes to your family, and then it goes to your community. Let me say that again. Revival has a pattern. It starts in you. It doesn't start with a service. It doesn't start with a church service. It doesn't start with a prayer meeting. It starts with you, you and God. Revival starts with you. And then it goes to your family and then your community. Revival is the process of restoring back to the original, just like my mother would do. She would bring that plant back to the original, to original health of that plant. It's a reestablishment of God's intent. Beloved, we have to, I keep saying beloved, that's funny. Beloved, we have to um, redefine what a successful Christian walk looks like after this. Again, we're not going back to normal. We can't be normal. It is causing the church to redefine what a successful Christian walk looks like. There is a graduated glory. For some of us, we've been trapped in the monotony of, of church going for our entire lives. We have we have enough Jesus, just enough Jesus to get to heaven, but not enough Jesus to be transformed and transform others. It's time to graduate. But what does that look like? What does that look like? D? That looks like no more normal church life ain't enough. Just because you're doing something for church doesn't mean you're doing it for God. <laughs> ooh, 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 y'all got tight on me. I'm not going I'm not going to turn my plow just because you're doing something. In church doesn't mean you're doing it for God. It doesn't mean that you are actually accessing purpose. 
We got to graduate to a greater glory. There is a more targeted intentionality to our lives other than what we do here for two and a half hours each week. John 17 says it like this. This is verse four and five of John 17. I brought you glory. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I'm going to say this again. I brought you glory on earth. How did we how did Jesus bring God glory here on earth? By completing the work you gave me to do. Guys, we got to target in on our purpose. God's original intent for our lives. We got to target in on our purpose. That's the original glory. It's, this says, the scripture says this, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. The original glory. Our new normal, I can't say it enough, our new normal is God's original intent. Put that in the comments. Our new normal, say my new normal is God's original intent. I'm gonna say this to you. The devil don't care if you gotta dance. The devil don't care. We come back together and we dance all day and dance all night unless that dance is connected to a decision. You got to connect that dance to a decision. And then that that praise, whew, that praise shakes hell. That that praise opens heaven up. You got to connect that dance to a decision. There's no point in me coming to the church and lifting my hands and surrender. And I don't have a surrendered life. Those lifted hands with a surrendered life. That how you access power. Oof, he doesn't want us to um, the devil doesn't want us to start to in this pandemic time while we're home alone to start to, to connect with God and start to birth multimillion dollar ideas. He doesn't want that to happen. He doesn't he doesn't want you to spend this time seeking God and, and say, God, birth in me innovation. God, birth in me ideas, birth in me new ways to present the gospel. God, birth in me new ways to um, to uh, to uh, connect with my uh, neighbors and connect with my coworkers once this pandemic is over. God, reinvent me, reinvent me, make me new again. I had this. Um, <laughs> You're, uh, so, some people, some of us are so addicted to our church identity that we can't divorce ourselves from it. And, and we really want to get ourselves back to normal. I called I, I, um, I uh, this was a long time ago. I, I was, this is when I was working in the architect's office and I called here. I called my dad. I was probably asking him for money. I'm sure I was. And, I, and this is when my, um, Archbishop was here full time. And I called the church and he had. His, uh, oh, gosh. And somebody answered the phone. I'll say it like that. And and I said the person's name. I said, hey, so and so. And they said, uh, excuse me, I'm elder so and so. And I said, oh, I said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, but I call Jesus by his first name. Listen, we have to divorce ourselves from only what happens here. A lot of us only have power in church. But let us get out in these streets. But let us get home. And we have to be able to transfer. I'm not finished yet. I feel like I'm done, but I'm not. And we have to be able to take the same power that God has uh, imputed in, in us uh, in these four walls and be able to take it out of here. That's God's original intent for our lives. Um, I was on my way to work. I get up very, very early. I'm a personal trainer and I got I was getting I got up. I get up at 4 a.m. or 3.45 or 4 a.m. every day. And um, as I was driving to work, I, that's typically the time I pray. And um, as I was driving to work, God said, I need you to prepare for work just like you prepare for praise and worship. What? He said, just like that's ministry. You going to work right now to engage these people is ministry. So I need you to prepare and pray and seek God for these people that you are engaging every day. These 50 or so people that you're engaging every day, just like you engage those people on Sunday when you're doing praise and worship. That is graduated glory, y'all. That's a new level of Christianity. That's something new. That's 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 a, that's the next level, guys. That's the next level. After this pandemic, we got to be deployed. We got to be deployed, guys. We got to be deployed. Um, OK. This is my conclusion, conclusion of part one. <laughs> it's a trick of the enemy to get you to desire things go back to normal. There is no regular old me. There is no regular old you. And here's one of the things I want to drop this prophetic point here as well. Gosh, Lord, speak God, speak God, speak God, speak God. Guard your gates. When you're in this pandemic, guard your gates. 
the thing that the uh, the thing that the trick that the enemy is using. So you can't hear God. So God, when God is trying to pull you back to your original intent, to his original intent for your life, that original purpose is that he wants to clog your gates. He wants to bombard you with so many services online and so many praise breaks and so many posts and so many prayer meetings and then so many things on Netflix and so many episodes and binge watch so many things that your gates are clogged. And now there's so, too much, too much, too many voices and God can't get through and speak to you about your original intent. Don't be lulled to sleep, people of God. Don't be lulled to sleep. We ain't normal. We got to embrace our spiritual heroism. I'm going to prove to you that you ain't somebody uh, just nudge your neighbor. Some, some of y'all in the bed next to your, uh, your spouse and just nudge them and tell them you ain't regular. You ain't normal. And you look at look back at them and say, you're right. I'm not normal. I'm not normal. This is what first Peter two and nine says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This word peculiar. I want to chime in on this word right here. Belonging. This word peculiar says belonging exclusively to one person, exclusively to one person and also deviating from the norm. We ain't going back to normal. You're not the you're not someone that should blend in. You got to let your light show shine. Like, come on, let's put our lights on the lampstand so we can shine for all the world to see. We're salt and light. God has created these conditions for us to finally be who he, who he designed us to be in the beginning. I mean, the you that the world is waiting for. It's time for us to reinvent ourselves. You can you, you can come back as somebody totally new, totally new. But the new is still God's original intent. I know I'm redundant, but I need to say it again. The new you is God's original intent. Earth is waiting for its heroes. Romans 8, 19 and 23. For all creation is waiting eagerly that future day when God will reveal who his children really are against its will. All creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day. When it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning. That's what COVID-19 is. Groaning. That's what those fires in Australia was. Groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. And we believe um, we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be, be released from sin and suffering. We, too, wait for the eager hope, the day when God will give us our full rights as adopted children. He's, he's already given you your full rights. We're just waiting for those new heavenly bodies. But God has given you those full rights. But all creation is eagerly, eagerly waiting for us to manifest, manifest back to God's original tent, back to who he created to you to be in the beginning before before, before life happened, before all of these things happened, before all of these tragedies and things happened in your life, before back to God's original intent, before the barnacles came, before things started attaching themselves to your life, before before that relationship started uh, attaching itself to your life, before before people started to label you, before all of those things, back to God's original intent. It's time for the heroes to rise up. Isaiah 60 says this. I'm going to cut across the field. I always wanted to say that. My dad said that all the time. I'm going to cut across the field here. Isaiah 60, 1 through 4. Arise, Jerusalem. Let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations. All the nations. But the glory of the Lord rises on you and appears over you. So all nations will come to your light. That sounds like revival. Mighty kings will come to your radiance. That sounds like revival. Look and see for everyone is coming home. That's revival. Your sons are coming from distant land, distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried from home. This is what happens when we get back to God's original intent for our lives. The, the glory of the, the glory of the Lord rises upon us and it shines upon us. And the and, and people are drawn to that light. That's spiritual heroism. It's time for the, 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 the hero to rise up within us. Um, this, is, this time is um, quite important. Don't, let's, let's, not, 
Let's, don't take this time as an extended vacation. Don't let the enemy lull you to sleep. Um, don't, don't let the enemy just uh, kind, kind of take, you, take this as a passing time and just wait, wait it out in order for things. But we need to be spiritually active right now. The ball's in our court now. Will we just return back to normal? Are we just waiting it out? Um, um, are we in our homes? It, now's the time that we can even address things that we've never addressed in our lives. A hurt that you've never been able to address in your life. Um, a situation in your life that you were never able to address. You can have conversations that you were never able to have before because you didn't feel like it was the time to play. Now's the time to do it. Let's start by this. Let's start by doing this. Let's clean the slate. Let's, let's clean the slate. This is the thing. I don't want to see the same you once this pandemic is over. I don't want you to see the same me once this pandemic is over. I want you to think, I want you to know that I'm different. I want you to sense the difference. I want you to see the difference inside of me. If, you, if we've come back out of this pandemic the exact same way we went into it, we have wasted this opportunity. We have wasted this opportunity. Psalm 51 says this, we gotta clean the slate. Create in me, and I'm finishing up, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew the right spirit in me. That word create right there, that is the same word as barah. That's the same word that's used in Genesis when God uh, breathed life into the dirt and created man. That same word barah, back to original intent. It also, that, that word create right here, also says to form by cutting away. To form by cutting away. To make smooth and then to polish. <laughs> Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew the right spirit in me. Renew, rebuild, repair, put back into the condition of newness. The right spirit, that stable spirit, an established spirit within me. And don't cast me away from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit in, you know, away from me. Restore to me. Turn me around. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Hallelujah. You're a hero. We have to embrace our spiritual heroism. You're not regular. You're a hero. You can't return back to normal. Um, we don't need your normal. I need your original intent. I need the original you that God intended in the beginning. I'm going to pray and I'm going to let you go. Um, God, I have some prayer points here um, and I want to be very intentional about this prayer. God, we bless you. The Bible says in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. So, God, even in the midst of these things and um, these hard times that we're experiencing, these confusing times that we're experiencing, we give you thanks. That's the first thing that we do. We give you thanks. Come on, let's just, just start to open your mouths up, even in your bedroom or your living room, wherever you're watching this. Come on, start to give them thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you thanks. God, ignite a wildfire in our souls. Ignite a fire, a Holy Spirit birth fire in our souls that we can't contain, that we can't contain. And let that fire, let that fire, that spirit of revival, not only stay in us, but also reach our family. And once this pandemic is over and we're uh, free of the stay home order and that it goes to our jobs and the people we know in our jobs, all of our circle of influence, um, um, uh, our neighbors and our co-workers and, the, and our gym buddies and, and my, uh, your sports buddies and, and all, all of those kinds of things, God, spark the revival in us first. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we offer up our white, white flags in surrender. We completely, we lift surrendered hands, but we more than that, we give you a surrendered life. It's not just a form. We're not just giving you a form anymore and the denying the power thereof, God. We're just not looking to keep repeating forms every seven days, every time we come to church. But God, we want the power. We want the power that's beyond the form. God, the hour has come. Glorify your children as we seek to glorify you. Let there be an exchange of glory as you uh, give us your, uh, your glory, as you put your glory inside of us and we shine. God, we let that light shine for all the world to see so the world can be drawn to our light. Give us courage. Oh, hallelujah. Give us courage to break our old molds. Give us courage to break habits right now. Give us courage to break our personal, our traditions. God, remove reproaches. God, remove rumors and gossip. Us, uh, get, uh, that, that, remove the narrative, God, that was out there about us. Erase the perceptions uh, and the gossip that, that kept us from seeking new levels in you. A heart that is after you, the right spirit. 
Put a right spirit within us, God. Show us our true identity and our purpose. Release business plans. Release innovation. Release ideas. Um, uh, release collaboration. Um, release co connectivity. Um, create, create synergies, God, in the name of Jesus. Don't let the hero lie dormant within, within us, but stir up the gift. Stir up the gift and show us our purpose. And, our parent, and then the parents, God, let the parents start to see what's in their children, what was the original intent, even in their children's lives, God. And even show the teenagers and, and the young ones, even, even start, start to show them, give them glimpses, God. Woo, hallelujah. Give them glimpses of who, who, who they are in you, God, in the name of Jesus. Show them who they are. Give them identity so they don't have to get an identity from the world. So they don't have to get an identity from their, their friends. So they don't have to get an identity from social media. So they don't have to get an identity from reality TV. God, show them. Show them who they are. Don't let the hero lie dormant in them, God. But rise them, raise them up as heroes. Raise them up as spiritual heroes. Not just in church. Don't just give them a dance, but give them direction. Don't just give them a dance, but help them to make decisions. Hallelujah. God, thank you, Jesus. God, show them the function that goes along with their form. Let them know. Let them know exactly who they are. Let us all know who exactly we are in you. Take us back to the original tent. That's the new normal. We are never going back to regular. We ain't regular. We're not going back to normal. There is no normal. It's only a new normal. And the new normal is God's original intent. God bless you.
that you're still with us don't let this streaming stop as of yet I have some great people with me on this morning uh, here we are once again at the conclusion of our services but uh, this is some information that you definitely want to hear and be a part of uh, it's youth Sunday at Kingdom Worship Center yes. that's right youth Sunday <laughs> and since it's youth Sunday we decided to make sure that some of our young adults were doing were joining us in this particular session they call themselves the what? The, the, ga the, the gathering. gathering. The gathering. The gathering. <laughs> you can find them on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook. Anything yeah, else? YouTube. YouTube. All right. So these are the, these are the places that you can actually find them. And tell me, really, if you could, would let me know. I uh, don't. Maybe I ought to introduce you first. We have mm -hmm. here to my right. Introduce yourself. Um, Kiara Kelly Jones. Here, Kelly Jones and I am Andrea. 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 <laughs> Andrea. Trine. Dang, oh, oh, it's, all right. it's all right. Next Stop. one. And light Hi. skin. What's your name? Ooh. Sade Barksdale is my name. There we go. There we go. So we have these three ladies that are joining us for this special time, and I'm so excited they are with us. Now tell us exactly what is the gathering and, and what it's about and why. Why? Why the gathering? Who wants to kick us off? You wanna go? Light skin. Y'all play a lot. So pretty much um, the gathering is a virtual Bible study that was put together by millennials um, because we just felt like we wanted to, you know, learn more of God's word and learn to apply it, not only understand it, but also apply it. Oh, that's so awesome. So you guys are looking for application of, of his word. Yes. And the most important part of it is that we get people who are leaders within the church to help us explain what it is that we're reading a little bit better for us to understand. So you're not, so even though you're doing this, you're not doing this in isolation. Right. No. no. Yeah. Oh, this is, that's, that's so awesome. So who was some of, one of your first persons that you had on as a... <laughs> that, that's okay. so funny. That's so funny? It was Pastor okay. Tanya Dennis. Okay. She was our All right. first one. She was your first person. Yes. And then okay. our second person was Elder Clayton. Elder Clayton. That was a good one. Awesome. Y'all have to yeah. go watch yes. that one. Yes. Y'all got to go watch the playback yes. for that one. That so one you, you, you do an archive with it or? Yes. You're yes. able to watch it on Instagram. Um, and on YouTube. And, and on, on Facebook. YouTube. Facebook. It's on, on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. So it's still on Facebook. Now, when we go on Facebook, we look up The Gathering is what we're looking yes. for? The, the Gathering the, Live. Yeah. The Gathering Live. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's so awesome. So we're glad that you have this going on. So what do you, who do you want to reach with, with The Gathering? To be honest, mm -hmm. um, I think at first we were looking to reach millennials or people like ourselves. But in doing this, we found out that anyone and everyone could benefit from this because it is us not just trying to know the word because you know you can be grown up in church all your life and all those things and know the word but not understand the word mm -hmm. so for anyone that wants a deeper understanding of God's word and is willing to actually put in the work to you know understand so that you can apply it to your life what's been one of your favorite things have, have, have you, if you got if you had a nugget from some of the things that you actually heard what would you say is one of those nuggets that was that was really Something tangible, a good example for somebody to know what they're going to be a part of. My favorite part was when we were talking to Elder Clayton and we went over the book of Exodus. Okay. And we were talking about um, how was Moses prepared for him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, right? Mm, that's <laughs> right. You got it. You so got it. Yeah, yeah. It was, my favorite part is when you can apply your real life situations into the story when we're going through the Bible. And me and him could relate on some stuff of when it came back to our childhood, what we experienced, and 
stuff with our families and different things like that, those things have prepared us. And it's not necessarily mm -hmm. all negative things, but it's also the positive stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The stuff that, um, that will change our outlook of how we see it, and then it prepares us as we get older. Fantastic. Now, if y'all don't, y'all trying to figure out who Elder Clayton is, he's actually our youth director. So yeah. please, please, please make sure you check out on that other uh, social media post. Check that out. Now, right now we are dealing with, as a church, we're dealing with a theme of from uncertainty to opportunity. Now, these two things sound like they could be in contradiction. But since you all are millennials, I need you to help us out. Uh, because one thing we do want to do is we want to make sure we're ministering to everybody. We're not ministering just to uh, persons who are older or seniors. We got to make sure we're ministering God's word to everyone with where they are. So if you were to, to talk about areas of uncertainty, what do you think that, and I know you're not speaking for all millennials, and I'm not asking you to, but what do you think are some challenges uh, for millennials in this particular day that we're in that may cause them to be in a place of uncertainty? Um, actually, we were discussing this a little bit earlier today, Bishop. So um, for, I can only speak for myself, and for me, I know it was hard because I have a daughter and I'm in school, and then with school for her being switched over to online, I feel like, you know, now school has gone from, I feel like I'm in college for her and myself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's kind of tough, and then like earlier we were talking about, um, like us as millennials, we're so used to doing everything for ourselves, we, we, don't, we don't hold back nothing, and now it's like life itself has stopped. Mm -hmm. It's came to a complete cease, and so it's like, what do you do? Like, we're the type of persons where we're ready to jump in. If we want Chinese food, we jump in the car. If it's all the way across town, we're going to go get it. And now <laughs> it's like, you can't do that. So it's, it's a balance that really we have to learn to adjust. But noticing this, like, this has gave us opportunity to, um, to pretty much, like, get into God's word. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, it's actually allowed me to get closer and build my relationship with him. So. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. What, about, what about yourself? Well, for, for me, this is so personal because everything happened for me today. Okay. Um, I don't know what that means. Everything happened for you today. So I'm sure you're going to explain I'm everything that to, happened. I'm going to explain. So me trying to move forward and, you know, applying to school and everything like that, it's, it's tough because where am I going to go to school? I, it's different programs, and then you get your waiting list letters or your denial letters, and then it's like, okay, so what's next, God? And then it's even harder because it's everything shut down. Mm -hmm. So when you're already in the middle of a transition, and mm -hmm. then this comes with transition and everything, it's like, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do in this season? So, you know, and and I, though that's that is that is great to understand for millennials. I think pause becomes a hard place for all of us, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we don't know if pause actually means stop. And that becomes one of the hardest things for us as believers is, God, we always want, unfortunately, what's next, sometimes to the degree that we ignore what's happening now mm -hmm. or what God has already done. And the truth be known is that God has already done some great things in all of our lives. What about you, uh, Kiara? What do you, what do you see that is, and say your name with the New York accent the way I like it, the New York accent. Kiara. Kiara, right. <laughs> so what, what's, some, what's some things that you see that were some places of uncertainty? Um, I think for me, um, working from home and having a newborn is very interesting because um, are you really working? Is that like fair to say? Because you're running around, you know, you're doing different things. It's a different dynamic that you have to adjust to. And then um, I think, like Sade said, millennials like to be on the go. And I'm that millennial. I love to be on the go. I love to have something to do. I had a baby one week. I was out the next week. I, I, I need You were. <laughs> we get all the tests. We were like, what are you doing here? Right? You just had a baby. <laughs> but I, I like not being contained um, and to be able to just be free to move around. So I think this time of uncertainty is more, I think, connected to our lack of control. Mm. Because uh, as a generation, we have been fed the thought that you can do anything you want to do. You can be anything you want to be, which mm -hmm. you can. But now you're seeing in measure, it is literally up to God. That's yes. awesome. It's oh, that's so awesome. That, that is so awesome. And I think what that does is that kind of takes us really from uncertainty to opportunity. 
is when we say, you know what, is that I'm in this place where I'm used to doing things, getting what I want and all of those things, but now we're in this place where I'm realizing it's all up to God. Yeah. And it's not, there are some things I'm not in control of that God is in control of. So I, I can really appreciate that. What type of opportunities do you see? I'm sure that in the midst of all of this that has happened, you see something that's like, you know what, we could do that's different. You know, you know who I could be. You know what could be going on in my life. What would you say? Let's start it around in reverse order this time. What do you see that you say, you know what, this is an opportunity? I think that we're gaining an opportunity to truly get to know ourselves, mm. get to know our children, get to know our friends, the relationships, what relationships are really built on. And mm. even our relationship with God is being challenged because you no longer have the luxury of going somewhere and, you know, being in the room full of you have to take personal responsibility for your relationship with God. And so I think this gives us a genuine opportunity to know him better, to know ourselves better and to know our surroundings better. Awesome. Awesome. Andrea. For me, I have the opportunity to sit and reflect on myself, okay. sit and reflect on who God is to me, our relationship, focus on that. Mm -hmm. And also, ha I now have a clear mind and op opportunity and time to actually spend time in his word and honestly get to know different people and have relationships with them that awesome. I probably would have never done, okay, <laughs> <laughs> all of this didn't happen. Wow, um, wow. And the difference between me and these ladies is that I'm single. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have children. I don't have a spouse. Mm -hmm. So, you know, home quarantine by yourself, like what is it that you do? Mm -hmm. So having that time to get to know yourself, to spend time with God is, is really vital. I realized that, and I would have never been able to do that going to school and working two jobs, wow. honestly. Wow, good, good. Shade. Well, for me, um, it's pretty much exactly what Andrea and Kiara were saying because like I've learned to get into God's word. I'm learning my daughter more. Um, and just like what I thought was life was, is now just different mm -hmm. um, because I have, I have a five-year-old. And so, you know, with her, it's like constantly something changing, something new. And I just learned her and yeah, that's just- wow. That is awesome. Now, and, and I can, if I can attest to it, and that our mm -hmm. children are somebody probably a little different than we knew yeah. with them going to school mm -hmm. and having other days and babysitters, and then you have but with them a couple of hours after you get off of work. Not to to be with I'm them all day, huh? Say it again. Not to mention I'm still working. Not to mention yeah. you're still working. So, yeah. yeah, so to be with them a long time is you're learning different parts, though, of them. Now, listen, I, I hope you, you all have enjoyed an opportunity to share with these wonderful uh, ladies, and I'm sure there's some guys that they definitely, we know Elder Clayton was there, that they'll invite to be a part of <laughs> the gathering. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. You don't know about that? Sure. I, know, I didn't know where he was going with that. Uh, you know, okay. All right. So, but <laughs> hilarious. But, but I'm mm -hmm. sure that as uh, this continues, it's something that you want to be a part of. Definitely look them up yes. on Facebook, Instagram. YouTube, be a part of them, share with them, subscribe to their YouTube yes. channel. Did you get his YouTube channel? Yes, subscribe to the YouTube channel and also subscribe to Kingdom Worship Center Media's yes. YouTube channel. Yes, you and did. as you subscribe to these, to these channels, it'll definitely be a benefit to the, your ministry. And I, I'm really excited about what you're doing. I'm really excited about Thank you me. sharing and growing together. And I pray that as you continue to move forward, I don't know, maybe one day I'll be on your invitation list and I can come be a part and Listen, share and stuff like that. you are scheduled in. Don't worry about it. I'm right. scheduled You're in? Scheduled in. We have a schedule. We have a We're schedule. not worrying about that. Okay. Taking you can have a, books of the Bible, Bishop. You can yes, have a schedule, taking. but if you don't tell the person they're on the schedule, your schedule means nothing. Well, and so, wow. <laughs> all right, millennials, just so that. you know that. Nah. But no, like, <laughs> right. each, each book of the Bible, Bishop, we try to get a new person to help us. Oh, that's awesome. So, that's definitely it's coming don't that's you? awesome yeah, you know invitation that, yeah. is well you make sure that uh give me uh I, i'll take not we'll, we'll, we'll save save revelation tonight. for ralph dennis oh. and uh <laughs> just just so you know i don't want revelation <laughs> get, <laughs> get that to give that to him he'll like that um but I want you to do this. I want you to continue to do the work of ministry. I want others to join you. Um, I want those of you who are streaming with us, whether you're part of Kingdom Worship Center or not, I want you to join the gathering. This is something that will be beneficial to your life, and it's some place where you can grow and learn the word together. I like what you said when you said we had opportunity to know people that I didn't know before. 
Because in this season that we are, there's two things when they ask Jesus the question. They, they ask Jesus, they challenge him. They say, what is the greatest law of the commandments? And he says, the first one is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, strength. You know it. And then he says, and the second is like unto the first, to love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two hang all of the commandments. And so we want you to make sure that you're not just loving God in this time, right. but you're also making opportunity to love your neighbor. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We pray that you have been blessed. Uh, look these ladies up and come join them and be a part of it. Yes. And uh, we're going to kick it back out to our hosts for this morning. God bless you. Bye. Wow, that was a wonderful message by Darian Dennis this morning. I pray that it blessed you as much as it blessed me. Before we depart, we would like to invite you to give as part of our worship. If you wish to do so, here are four options at the bottom of the screen. As you are examining those options and you're preparing your hearts to give, it is such a wonderful, wonderful thing for us to be able to worship the Lord with our tithes and with our offerings. Thank you so very much for the stewardship that you're demonstrating. It is going to certainly allow us to extend the work of ministry beyond our song and beyond, beyond our preaching and give us a chance to sow into the very lives of people with some tangible capability. So please, please, please take advantage of those four giving opportunities at the bottom of the screen. I guarantee you, you cannot outdo the Lord's giving. And certainly we will reap a reward as is fit according to the stewardship that we are able to share in this chance. By way of announcement, we want to share a couple of things with you. Number one, the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. That means that they just get a lot of work done. Please send your prayer request to us at info at kingdomworshipcenter.org. We would love to pray with you, to touch and agree. We would love to read over them and share them with our intercessory team and ensure that we are lifting them up as a sweet-smelling savor to the Lord. We also want to share with you that on Wednesday, we do have food giveaway. So please keep your eyes open on social media, whether that's Facebook or Twitter or visiting our website, www.kingdomworshipcenter.org. We will have details about this Wednesday's food giveaway, and we want you to understand what's going on there. Thank you so much in advance for the members that are going to come out and volunteer and make sure that we are doing this good work. Please. Remember that also we have our weekly fellowships in the way of our small groups. So look, keep your ears open, keep your eyes open for emails or from text messages from your small group shepherds. And we will certainly look forward to coming back together again next Sunday at 10 o'clock. You can visit us um, on YouTube by searching for Kingdom Worship Center Media, or you can visit us at kwc.church.online and we will visit with you then. For youth announcements, teens, we have a challenge for you. Go to social media and post your favorite inspirational quote or Bible verse online uh, to show that we have faith in the Lord no matter what happens in our lives. Please include hashtag faith not fear in your post. Coming soon Sundays at 11 a.m., Children's Church will be held via Zoom or Google Hangouts. Blaze Time will also be held via Zoom or Google Hangouts under the name of The Light Room. Lastly, if you attended Leadership Retreat, please email your leadership questionnaire to Dr. Marsha Shaw at mgshaw0621 at yahoo.com.